Well, we started chapter six, curved motion, with a unit on projectile motion. We saw that a ball launched above the ground at an angle, rather than going off in a straight line, followed a parabola back to the ground. Throughout the trajectory, the weight of the object pulls it down, causing the curve. So what would happen if we somehow could get the force to change in direction? Instead of always going down, it pointed towards the center of motion. It would just keep curving, forming a circle. And that's our next section, circular motion. So here we have a ball moving in a straight line. What could I attach to the ball so I could keep it in a circle? How about some string? The tension in the string would cause the ball to stay in a circle. If there was no tension and the string was cut, that ball would just move along in a straight line. Could I measure that tension with a spring scale? Yeah, sure, but the whole thing's gonna be whirling around. It's gonna be kind of hard to read that tension. Well, we can build something that'll do a better job. I've got a rubber ball, and I tied some string through a hole that I punched in this thing. It's a soft rubber ball. You can just use tape. This string is very fine. This is the good nylon fishing string that's braided that I gave you guys. This stuff is really slippery and really strong. Oh, I don't know, maybe about a meter long I've got here. I tied a loop in the other end. Now I've got my meter stick and I've got my spring scale attached to it with rubber bands. I have the Newton side showing out and the rubber bands are wrapped around a few times and I slid the whole thing down to about the middle of the meter stick. And at the other end, I took apart a pen. It's a plastic click ballpoint pen and I unscrewed the cap. And that's what I'm using for a guide at this end. I have a rubber band, a couple of them here, holding this down in place pretty tight. Now I've got to take that loop of string and feed it down through the pen. The tip of the pen is very smooth and provides very little friction on that string. I feed the string down and I hook it onto the spring scale. Yeah, it's working nice. I got the whole thing ready to go. Looks like I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing for forces. The tip has to stick out beyond the meter stick or the string will get stuck on it. Now, I'm holding this thing up like this. I'm going to swing it around my head. And I can read the spring scale and get the force. That's the tension in the string. The meter stick is a little flimsy, so you have to hold it near the top. So the faster I go, that force is getting bigger. You need to time the ball. Don't do it for one turn. Do it for like 10. Read the spring scale. Try it again, going faster. Try it again, going slower. You also need to measure the radius of the circle. And you're gonna do that with the very same meter stick. You're gonna to measure to the center of the ball from the pivot up here. So it may be another centimeter or two sticking off. So you just read it down the meter stick. If you wanna change the radius, you can just move the spring scale. You can move it up or down the meter stick to change the length of the string. And here's my beautiful 3D diagram of the apparatus. Let's say we're gonna whirl this around as shown. Why doesn't it go off in a straight line? There's a force pulling it towards the center of the circle. We call that a centripetal force. Centripetal means towards the center and we label it with the letter C. But you can never label a free body diagram with just the FC. We have to state what causes the FC. The force that keeps this in the circle is the tension in the rope. It's what causes the FC. So we can put an equal sign here, we can put a T there, and we can put an FC here, but you can't just put an FC. We always have to say what causes the FC. So what are we gonna do for this circular motion lab? You're gonna swing the ball in a horizontal circle. You're gonna have to go pretty quick or else this thing's gonna start to snag and wrap around the meter stick. You don't wanna do that. In reality, there will be a little bit of a drop here. We're gonna pretend that doesn't exist. We're gonna pretend that the string is horizontal. It's not a bad approximation. You're going to measure the mass of that ball on your digital scale. Measure the radius of the circle. That's the length of this string. These quantities will be held constant. 
time 10 orbits. And at the same time, measure the force of the scale. Now you can keep it going for a while after you're done hitting the stopwatch and then read the scale, but try to maintain a constant rate. The reading on the scale is the tension in this string producing the force needed to keep it in the circle. Do it faster, do it slower, do it a few times. Now we're gonna make a graph of some of that data. We're gonna graph the force of the scale versus the velocity. I think you know how to get that velocity. Think about it a little. The distance has to be a circumference. How do you get that? Hey, I think you know two pi r. And then you know if you did 10 orbits in that amount of time, I think you can figure this out. Now don't start here down at some high number, start at zero. We're looking for a trend, so please start at zero comma zero, and then number these scales accordingly. Don't skip a big gap here. Now I don't wanna show you what the graph's gonna look like. Hopefully you'll be able to come up with a graph where we can talk about it. All of the data for this graph is gonna come from one radius. Next step would be to do the lab all over again, but change the radius. Maybe make it larger, make it smaller, and make a graph with a second radius all on the same piece of paper. When you change the radius, make sure it's a substantial difference, like maybe doubling it or cutting it in half. So you're not gonna have any theoretical curve on here yet, not until we do the lab, and then we'll talk about it. Good luck, everybody.